Okay, here we go, guys. Um, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to link in the description two other times when I clean my fireplaces and to show you what I do and the process. No need to me redoing it again. You'll figure it out those first two. But this is what happened when I found this fireplace this time around, not knowing it happened at all. Didn't see it happening. And uh, so this is why we either have a professional check them or we check them every year, clean them. Um, I clean my fireplace, my pipe, all the way down my, all the way down to uh, my fire. I'll show you what I use. Here's my tools. Here's my brush. And here's three more extensions. Those are four foot each. So we've got 16 feet that actually drops it right down into the firebox. Okay. In the process, when you, um, before you go clean out your firebox, you take apart your inside, which is we have, um, these are called uh, some kind of like an air pipe. Let me turn this around. I can show you better. I can see what I'm looking at. Um, there's three of these that go up on the ceiling of my um, fireplace. All right. Then on top of that, there is this type setup. Okay, here we go. This is the front. You see this front edge, but there is a, a a fiber pad, you would say. And then under that, there is a fiber board. Okay, the fires actually come from underneath. So picture this being a fire, the uh, the your your um, fireplace. So a fire comes up, it hits underneath this this board I just showed you. Okay, these pipes lay. There's three of them. They lay, I'll lay them on top so you kind of see what I'm talking about. They lay about like right here, right here, and right here. They face down, the holes are down, into the fire. Okay, so there's three of them all the way across. What you do is you take this, you take each one of these out. There's a, there's a clamp that holds all these in. Take that out real quick. You slide these out one at a time, all three of them, and then you drop this whole assembly down in your hand and you take it outside or take it wherever you take it and then you start to disassemble what it is now usually this is all full of soot on top and uh, you can see how dirty it gets that this is normal um, i have replaced this pad once about uh three two two years ago it just starts crumbling they become no good um, when you clean these things off don't sit there and try to brush them because they fall apart all I do is turn them upside down, tap them lightly, and everything comes off of it. But now this is what I found that was very dangerous. Not knowing, because I didn't see nothing right here, okay? There was nothing you could see. I pulled the pad out. I actually pulled it apart in my wheelbarrow. Be gentle, because this stuff is fragile. All right? Close your eyes. Okay, now it's cracked. Okay? Um... That is your fire. It's like a fire board, fiber board. All right, and that just slides off there, okay? Now, what gets me is, is what's that piece of... What gets me is, is how come I didn't see no, like you see here, burn, you know, heat. It come through here, okay? We flip you over so you can see this side of it. You can see there's a side that hits the fire. You don't see no smoke, no damage, no cracks. I'm thinking what happened is this thing is so brittle that with me taking it outside, I knew I knew how brittle that is. Um, taking it outside and taking it apart, I think it, I broke it. But here's the thing is, when I took it apart, there was a crack. I could see it clearly. But it wasn't like this, but I, it still got me that you couldn't see no black on that, none. I don't understand why. But can you imagine if I had let this go this year and the crack had gotten open more and then this is your backup burn so things hit this, it doesn't get uh, burned through. But imagine if something bad would have happened, okay? Um, we just don't ever know. That's why we check our fireplaces, we clean them, we maintain them, okay? I had to order up a new fireboard. All right, new fireboard. It come a little bit bigger. And I cut it down to size, exact size. And it's very easy to cut. 
with a utility knife with straight line and it cuts perfect. So we're going to go back together again. Just like I showed you a second ago, all this is going to go back on top of here. Just like that. All right. Sorry, guys. Don't have a tripod with this camera. I'm using my cell phone. My other camera's down. That piece right here will slide back in underneath here. And then we'll slide all that stuff back together. You can watch that on my other videos. But um, on how we did this. Um, but also I want to talk about my fireplace blanket. So let me get this together. Let me get the blanket. I'm going to bring it back out here and talk to you about it. All right. I'll show you real quick what I'm talking about with these pipes all set. There you go. I thought they turned down straight. They go to the right. They got locked in with a special little bolt with a tab in it. Maybe you can see it better that way. That crack was literally somewhere. It's about center right through here. And then as you can see, it's all blocked off. All the air, smoke, everything goes out the front where I'm pointing light at and goes around up through and into your, you can actually see uh, where is it at? Right there. There's my pipe. So there you go, guys. Let's show you how it all set in here. This is a better view of it. <coughs> Alright, guys, gonna tell you a short story why or why I like these fire blankets. My neighbor next door, I don't know what it was five years ago, four years ago. Um, I did a video. So I first started video uh, doing videos and they called and said, hey, our house is on fire. And so I ran over there and um, um, they, uh, their chimney on the up above the roof. Um, you can see the fire within the windows from inside the house. It was all on fire. And, um, and they had the fireplace on. It was cold out. Um, they literally thought, we all thought, it was a fire within the chimney itself, the way it was going out the roof. But the big thing is, it had a wooden chimney on top of the roof. It was burnt through already. So the fire had traveled, we thought, within the wood structure. We were wrong. This is what we found out after. After we found out there was a gas line that ran in a wall and did a right angle shot out the house for them to hook up a gas grill if they wanted to. It had nothing to do with the fireplace, but it had to have a leak in the line and it traveled to the fireplace. And when the fire was on, it caught everything on fire. Okay. That's the story. But now let's go to what happened. They opened up a fire blanket and threw it over the fireplace area because they thought that was the fire. They didn't know that the fire had gotten so bad when I seen it. The fireplace on the chimney was gone on top. That's how bad it was on fire. So when I ran in and told him, hey, get out of it. I could text my, call my wife, uh, bring the fire fire extinguisher that we had for our fireplace, which I'll show you here in a second. And uh, we got those brought over. And um, um, we were spraying everything we could spray. They put the fire blanket on. Finally... Um, I just, we all just said, we can't even see no more. It's too dark. We need to get out and you got to let it go. So anyway, now two days later or a day later, we go back over and uh, we're looking at the fire and the whole living room area and the back of the house is burnt out. Okay. So bad that the bricks are falling down. It, this thing burnt very hot, but here's the thing. Let me show you something. Here is, oh, there she shows up. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? You're a good girl, huh? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, huh, baby? Okay. Here you go. This is what they broke open. Now, they used. I've done two videos already on my house about cleaning the fireplace out and showing these blankets. I firmly believe in it. I'm going to do another video, part of this video with this. There is a the name of the fire blanket right there here's the size that they had and this is the size i got this size will completely consume and hang over this whole area right here i believe this is a three by three i think it is it's a big blanket how it's used two 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 ways you can do this one they have a really strong hook if you put a really strong hook on a wall it should work 
basically this bottom was velcroed closed okay there you go that's the way it is it, you can even have it laying on a shelf whatever but what you're going to do open this up with one hand grab these black tabs either it's still on a hook or your other hand you're grabbing this you're pulling this fire blanket out it opens up big okay now you look real close sun you look real close that resembles like a like a fiberglass mat okay see it okay throw that on top of the fire and it should it, it's going to do is going to cause the oxygen under the fire blanket to go out any kind of fire now if you have a wood fire going on if you have a gas grill that the grease that catches fire that burns wild you throw these blankets on top move slow you have a smoker to catch fire oh heck you guys who who doesn't go into a deep fry your uh, your, your turkeys or chickens in a turkey fryer the grease splatter that catches fire this is where that comes in handy immediately. You bust that open, you lay it on top, it suffocates the fire, you're done. Okay, <clears throat> I have seen it. In their fireplace, when we walked around, that fire blanket looked not, it wasn't white, of course, it was charred, not charred, it was black and sooted, discolored, but the form of it was still there. It never burnt sunlight. It never burnt. It never disappeared. It was there within the fire. The rest of the house back there was gone. That laid there, not burnt. All right. Talked about fire extinguishers. Here you go. Got two fire extinguishers. They're both the same way. I looked on there so I can zoom in to see it, but they don't say it. But those those fire uh, extinguishers are rated for boats. Okay. I owned two of them. They had one of those next door. They actually sprayed all of theirs gone. I called my wife because I ran over and said, hey, bring me this fire extinguisher that we had in our house over also. So we, you know, we're trying to, we, they didn't want to give up. <sighs> These are rated for boats. Okay. Reason, boat ones are a lot better is because of the, um, if you think you're in the water, you need something that works fast and have plenty of to put fires out you got to be fast and this is why i chose to like i said those were mine i chose to go with these well because i use mine they replace mine with one of those so now i've got two of those and one of those and this is what we keep near our fireplace okay these are boat rated fire extinguishers there you go there's my little thing i told i want to tell you about the fire blanket in the fire extinguishers, how they work, why they're very critical, life could depend on it, always. I think every household should have one of these in their home so you can throw it on top of any kind of fire. Picture a fire on your stove. Don't throw water. The worst thing you can do. Don't throw a towel. The worst thing you can do. Throw that on top. You put the fire out. All right, guys, I hope this helps you out with this part. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. If you would, leave a comment, and if you would, leave me a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and you all have a great day. Bye.